FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Dam Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mithul Shah from Dam Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Rayo. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to all the participants. On behalf of Dam Capital, I welcome you all for CIT's Q2 FY24 post result conference call. Thank you, CIT, for giving us the opportunity to host the call. We have with us C8 Management, represented by Mr. Arnab Benerji, MD and CEO, and Mr. Kumar Subaya, CFO. Without wasting any time, we'll invite Mr. Arnab Benerji for his initial remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to C8's uh, quarter two FI24 and call. I'll be taking you through the business updates for the quarter and then hand over the call to Kumar Subaya for his remarks on financial performance. Post that will be open for uh, Q&A. So let me start uh, with the big news of Fiat winning the Denning Grand Award. As you are aware, um, uh, this is one of the most pre prestigious quality awards presented by the Union of Japanese Scientists and Engineers called JUICE for excellence in total quality management. Fiat became one of the only 33 companies in the world and the only tire company in the world to win this honor since its inception in 1969. This award points towards consistency of customer experience across the globe and consistency in, the, in market share gain and financial performance. I'll come to uh, the performance proper for Q2. As the base is now normalized, we are reverting to more commonly referred year-on-year -year comparison for volume. Quarter two was a good quarter for us with an overall volume growth of 7% over last year's quarter two. Exports are doing good and grew about 10% over the same period. Uh, passenger car tires had a significant uptick followed by truck and bus tires. Off highway volumes were little subdued due to uh, slowdown in Europe. Replacement volumes grew about 4% year-on-year. Domestic off-highway uh, grew very well uh, with a strong double-digit growth followed by passenger cars, car tires. Two-wheeler and truck bus tires volume also grew in low single digits. OEM uh, business continued to witness healthy momentum with volumes uh, growing by about 10% over last year. Truck and bus volumes grew by more than 35% as a testimony to increasing acceptance of our truck bus radial tires quality-wise. Two, three-wheeler three sales have also done well, uh, indicating a gradual recovery towards the end of last quarter. Over Q1 FY24, volumes grew about 3.5%, uh, uh, and uh, despite uh, quarter two being uh, seasonally a low quarter, replacement was flattish, while OEM registered double-digit growth in anticipation of festival sales. Exports uh, saw a marginal drop. Demand outlook, uh, as you know, monsoon overall has been good, but uh, the spatial distribution and the timing were inconsistent. This is likely to affect the Kharif uh, crop output in some states and uh, could also adversely impact a nascent rural recovery. So we would wait and watch the situation closely. As of now, replacement de demand is stable across all categories with routine seasonal trends. On the OEM side, vehicle sales growth uh, uh, has been varied across category. Two-wheeler uh, bikes degrew in quarter two. Four-wheelers are doing well, which topped uh, two million cars in half one. And uh, truck and bus are growing in single digit in quarter two. Export markets uh, are improving, especially uh, the markets around Asia and Africa. Europe is impacted by recessionary trends. And uh, uh, as I said, traditional geographies for us like Middle East, Africa, and SARC are normalizing. Uh, on margins, input prices remain benign during the quarter. The raw material basket, uh, basket decline 
by about two and a half to three percent uh, vis-a-vis quarter one. Uh, we have largely been able to maintain our selling price uh, Q1Q, and uh, there was also a relative uh, you know, price positioning change in aftermarket in some categories. Both these factors, along with better product mix, contributed towards gross margin expansion over 200 bits quarter on quarter, and standalone margin, EBITDA margin for the quarters stands at 15%, and net profit standalone was 199 crore. Capacity utilization has been improving consistently and is about uh, 80% overall. Uh, better margins and higher utilizations have helped improve our ROC as well. And uh, we will continue to focus on ROC by improving capital productivity and efficiency. On the margin outlook, uh, crude prices, uh, as you are aware, has been going up steadily. Uh, if uh, the current prices sustain, RM basket may be going up three to four percent uh, over quarter two base. I think we are we have bottomed out on RM prices. Uh, we are watching the situation closely and will take action as appropriate going forward. CS is uh, future ready. We are looking at all the mega trends uh, with focus like electrification, going global, premiumization, and digital. Um, as far as electrification is concerned, uh, we continue our uh, strong market share in OEMs in electric vehicle two-wheeler tires with more than 40% share of business. Recently, Oban Electric e-bike, e-sprinto, Emory e-scooter were launched on Fiat tires. In passenger market also, we are uh, working with OEMs with several models launched or to be launched such as Mahindra XUV400, NG Comet, ZS Electric Vehicle, Citro C3, um, and some upcoming launches like BYD Auto, Tata Punch, EV, Kia, a couple of vehicles, Privy, and EVA. Um, in commercial segment, electric vehicles such as Tata Motors, Ace Electric Mini Pickup, as well as electric buses by Tata Motors, we are participating uh, also with OEMs uh, like Volvo Isher, Electra, PMI Electro. Second uh, mega trend is, of course, uh, uh, going. Uh, uh, second initiative, I would say, is, is, a, is a strong. Uh, participants, please stay connected. We seem to have lost the line for the management. Please stay connected while we reconnect the line for the management. Participants, please stay connected while we reconnect the management line. Participants, thank you for patiently holding your lines. We have the line for the management reconnected. Uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, I, was, I would like to continue on our internal uh, international business uh, pursuit. Uh, we have a run rate of selling more than 2 million passenger car tires internationally, with nearly half of them going to Europe. This business is doing well. We have the largest imported tire brand in Brazil in the off-highway segment. We have also uh, got into several flagship OEMs such as John Deere, CNH, ADCO in off-highway tires, and we have added 40-plus SKUs in this vertical in quarter two. Truck bus radial tires are doing well in Europe and Latin American markets. We are getting ready for U.S. rollout by end of current financial year for both truck bus radial and passenger car radial. That program is going on schedule. Uh, about 200-plus SKUs will be launched across these two categories uh, in the U.S. Sri Lanka macro situation is improving and uh, quarter two has been a good quarter both top line wise and margin wise in Sri Lanka. The third uh, the major initiative is premiumization with launch of platforms such as cross drive, Ford drive, secure drive and secure drive SUV. The passenger car radial portfolio is getting uh, premiumized and the revenue shared from these new platforms, are, the revenue saliency continues to improve. Uh, Seat has started investing in a new brand property called Seat Trails, which is about expedition. The first one uh, happened over 22,000 kilometers from Mumbai to Siberia. 
Uh, this convoy went on Seat Cross Drive and Seat Winter Tires, and it was uh, the entire expedition went through India, Nepal, China, Mongolia, and Russia, uh, and it was completed successfully. Uh, we strengthen, we continue to strengthen our association with cricket. The 25th edition, edition of Seat Cricket Rating and Awards was held in Mumbai in this quarter. Uh, we are proud to share that uh, we have onboarded Shafali Verma as our brand ambassador during this quarter. And uh, with the World, onset of World Cup, we have launched Season 2 of Seat Timeout Series with Matthew Hedden. As the love of riding increases across the country, Seat is expanding its portfolio and introducing new product platforms for rally, dirt, biking, as well as in upmarket steel radios. Digitalization is the third major trend where uh, Seat continues to remain a leader. We are implementing Industry 4.0 practices across our plants. Uh, the Chennai plant went through the assessment of Lighthouse uh, Factory in quarter two. We are awaiting the result of the assessment. Um, as far as end consumers are concerned, we are heavily invested in marketing CRM. We received 1.5 times uh, more uh, searches on SUV tires, 7.5 times higher brand mentions, and 12 times higher interactions per post per month so far this year vis a vis FI23. We are generating about 6% of our passenger car replacement sales from D2C channels. CAPEX, our overall CAPEX uh, for the year is likely to be about 800 crores. Uh, previously, we had mentioned 750 crores. Um, this expansion, all expansion projects are progressing as of plans, and we want to reiterate our strategy of doing bite size CAPEX every year. This will help us maintain consistency in margins as well as the return ratios. Sustainability is uh, an important pillar for us. Uh, we continue to reduce uh, carbon footprint for, uh, for the half year. Our ton uh, carbon uh, uh, dioxide emissions per metric ton of production was lower by 16% YOI. Uh, about 36% of our planned power requirement is through renewable sources. And we intend to increase this contribution further during FY24. Water consumption per ton of production in half one reduced 8% reduced YOI. Natural rubber was sourced by alternate source to the extent of 25%. Leaving our purpose on safe mobility, CX has also created kiosks, provided free tire service on the new Samruddhi Highway. Nearly 100 cars avail this service every day. This initiative was taken as the accidents on Samruddhi Highway were increasing, with tire bursts cited as the major cause. So uh, the Menain raw material situation has, has helped us take faster strides towards making CF brand stronger as well as improving our return ratios. As demand re uh, remains buoyant, we are hopeful of managing uh, the volatility in raw material basket in coming quarters. As a Deming brand winner company, we want to become more and more consistent in our financial performance despite the inherent nature of our raw materials and are working on several controllables which help us navigate this better. With this, I would like to hand over the call to Kumar for his remarks. Thank you, Arnab. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thank you for joining our call uh, pertaining to quarter two. Uh, I would like to share some further financial data points uh, with you all, post which we can enter into Q&A session. Uh, first, uh, revenue, or uh, consolidated revenue for the quarter stood at 3,053 crores, uh, showing a quarter on growth, quarter growth of 4% and year on year growth of 5.5%, largely both driven by volumes. Uh, as Arnab mentioned, our revenue crossed an important milestone of 3,000 crores during the quarter for the first time. Coming to gross margins, our gross margin for the quarter moved up from 41.1% to a healthy 43.3%, largely driven by uh, lower raw material cost and better product mix. And the raw material costs were lower in quarter two to the extent of about 2.5% and uh, versus quarter one. And the better product uh, mix helped further in improving the gross margin and which uh, to the tune of about overall 227 basis points. Uh, crude oil, which was hovering around 75 to $80 range uh, in quarter one, has been slowly now largely operating at the higher end of around $90 to $95 since uh, middle of August. And the same has impacted the prices of peach stocks that go into making of tires. 
Uh, in general, uh, as you are aware, that uh, any increase in crude oil prices have always had inflationary impact not only on crude derivatives but also on many other commodities in general. Uh, international rubber prices have moved up by about $100 in the last two months. Uh, taking uh, further into consideration the depreciation of Indian rupee in the last three months, we expect our raw material basket to increase by about 4% in quarter four, quarter three versus quarter two. Uh, as Arnab mentioned, we'll continue to remain watchful of the oil situation and take corrective actions wherever possible. Uh, coming to debt, uh, CapEx and working capital, uh, we spent about 170 crores of capital expenditure uh, during the quarter. And with this, our overall capital expenditure in the first half is about 390 crores. Uh, we expect our full year CapEx to be around 800 crores, marginally higher than our uh, earlier estimate of about rupees 750 crores. Working cattle uh, has remained at similar level, uh, which is about negative 140 crores. Uh, as uh, we saw it in the previous two quarters. Uh, we generated healthy operating and free cash flow during the quarter, and uh, uh, cash that we generated, we used it to our fund our entire capital, capex requirement fully, and also to reduce our debt. Our consolidated debt stood at 1,890 crores, a reduction of about 100, uh, 103 crores over quarter one of current financial year. Coming to leverage ratios, our debt debit now stands at a healthy level of under 1.2x and debt debit uh, debt equity to the tune of about 0.5x. And during the quarter, the annual credit rating review happened and our credit rating of AA for long term and A1 plus for short term was affirmed by India rating. Coming to operational expenses, uh, employee costs increased by approximately 11% on quarter on quarter uh, largely on account of annual increment cycle effective July and also a higher level of production activities in factories during the quarter vis-a-vis -vis the previous quarter. The other expenses also moved up by about 4%, largely in line with uh, increase in our volumes. Uh, as regards our Sri Lanka business, uh, we are happy to inform you uh, that our volumes have now started growing in line with the improvement in economic conditions in Sri Lanka, leading to improvement uh, in the profitability of the business also during the quarter. Overall, uh, our consolidated debit for the quarter stood at 463 crores, uh, which translates to a margin of about 15.1%, almost 200 basis points higher than quarter one, and almost double that of the same quarter of last year. Our standalone EBITDA of 15% is the highest in the last 60 years. Our consolidated profits after tax stood at 207.76 crores, which compares favorably with the profit after tax of rupees 6.44 crores the same quarter of last year and rupees 144 crores in quarter one of the current financial year. And during the quarter, the company made an investment of approximately about 20 crores in uh, an entity called as Tires and More through both primary and secondary route. With this investment, Tires and more now has become a fully owned subsidiary of the And depreciation and interest costs in quarter two is largely similar to quarter one. Effective interest rate has increased by about five basis points over quarter one. We expect interest rates to remain similar or slightly a higher level in the near term. And during the quarter, the company also paid 120% of dividends, translating to approximately about 49 crores as approved by shareholders during the annual general meeting in. July 2023. With this, now we can now open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Sure, thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Asin Modi from Equiris Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations uh, for a great set of numbers. So my first question is regarding volumes. 
So could you please uh, give us some understanding in the replacement 4% year on year growth which we have talked about in flattish quarter on quarter uh, if you could give segment wise how replacement market performed and uh, what is the outlook of different segment in the replacement market Yeah hi uh, so uh, in replacement market uh, Q2 is a seasonal quarter seasonal downturn quarter as you would know um why why uh, truck bus uh, view at uh, Uh, single digit uh, kind of uh, growth low single digits we had a very good growth in farm tires uh, in replacement market um and uh, two three wheeler uh, as well as pcuv grew around uh, mid uh, single digits in by volume in replacement yoy okay Uh, and secondly uh, so on the export side if you uh, could provide us more color on how europe and off highway is performing and what is the uh, you know sequential recovery if you are seeing over there and what is the outlook uh, on the export side yes uh, in export uh, in europe there is uh, some kind of uh, headwind because of slowdown in the economy we have uh, felt this headwind primarily in the agri radial which is uh, not growing in europe However, on passenger car radial and truck bus radial, where our base is small, uh, base is small market share wise, but uh, in term in the context of our volume, the base is pretty big because, as I mentioned, about one million tire is the run rate of passenger car tires in Europe. So in that, uh, in these two segments, we are not really experiencing the headwind because we continue to grow as we keep developing our channel in Europe. uh overall um uh, uh, latin america there has been uh, some uh, kind of headwind because of uh, duties on tbr tires but that is now the market is adjusting to that new reality and we expect to uh, come back in the second half uh, of the year in latin america the nearby markets of africa and asia are normalizing vis-a-vis -vis last year and would uh, are already doing better than last year in the uh, in the first half and will continue to do well in half two Okay, thanks. And so my last question is: uh, so we you mentioned that uh, there has been some you know changing in pricing uh, during the quarter. Could you please uh, give us more color? Which segments were they, and uh, any more pricing changes expected going forward? In quarter two, uh, uh, I mentioned there's a relative price positioning change. So I'll explain. In passenger category, uh, there was a straight price price increase of two uh, percent, uh, roughly in quarter two, uh, and in truck bus radial uh, uh, segment, there was a relative price change of one percent, which means uh, there was a downward revision by competition, whereas we didn't revise the price. So, re in relative terms, these two categories were most impacted, and there were other changes also in light uh, commercial vehicle tires to the extent of about one percent. so that was quarter 2 quarter 3 we will watch the situation how the raw material uh, moves and uh, uh, given an opportunity now that our products are very well accepted across categories in terms of being uh, superior by way of tire life and fuel efficiency etc we will have opportunities we'll wait and see what to do okay thanks a lot sir i'll join back the queue thank you The next question is from the line of Raghunandan Nairal from Novama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on stellar numbers and also on the Deming price. Uh, sir, just wanted to better understand on the pricing situation. Uh, on the truck and bus, you indicated that competition reduced price by one percent. Uh, so so just wanted to understand uh, is it a one off case where in certain categories some discounting or price reduction is happening or are you concerned about competition intensity increasing in the market yeah so to clarify um, the price reduction by competition is by way of pricing as well as by your way of discounting yes uh, there's a lot of competitive activity happening in the market but as i mentioned that uh, we have been able to uh, increase volumes in a low seasonal quarter which is q2 over q1 uh, despite rmc going down we have removed uh, we have changed the relative price standing of our brand in truck bus radial and tcr so uh, i won't say we are not concerned but this is an encouraging sign that we have been able the market has absorbed 
this kind of pricing stands by CF and uh, has rewarded us with higher volumes. So that's encouraging, but the concern will stay if this continues. Understood, sir. And uh, any sense you can provide, sir, in terms of uh, uh, the first few months of the year, uh, how has the uh, market share uh, trend has been? Uh, have you been able to sustain share? Yes, so uh, so one of the disadvantages of having this call so early in the next quarter is that we don't have the entire data of market share. But I will give you uh, uh, some uh, direction on that. I think we are gaining market share in two uh, wheeler because the last uh, four to five months have been really great in terms of motorcycle and scooter sales in the placement market. Um, uh, and uh, on PCR, I would think that the market share will be steady uh, in the sense that uh, there will not be significant gains or significant losses in uh, two, three wheelers. And um, in truck bus bias, we would have gained a little bit of market share. And in truck bus radial, it would be consistent uh, uh, market share. In farm, we would have gained market share in replacement, is what we believe. Uh, got it, sir. And sir, uh, on the electric vehicle, how would your market share be? Electric vehicle, the market shares are relevant for OEMs only because in replacement, uh, the demand is uh, still not anything significant. Um, in two-wheeler, as I mentioned, the uh, two-wheeler OEMs, our market share would be 40% plus. We are there in almost all the leading uh, brands of the country, big and small, traditional players, as well as new players such as Ola. Uh, in uh, four-wheelers, uh, I mentioned some of the models uh, where we are working with uh, OEMs closely, and uh, uh, we, we have a high double-digit kind of market share in four-wheeler OEMs. Uh, both these are slated to improve in the next two years. Got it, sir. And uh, one of the focus area was uh, discontinuation of smaller diameter tires and focus on the larger tires. Uh, can you update on the efforts? Uh, because of this, uh, would we be lagging the uh, uh, industry growth? And going forward, do you expect volume growth to be similar to the industry? So uh, the, our exit from smaller uh, rim size tire is complete. All that has to be that that was on the cards have been uh, have, has happened. Uh, our Q2 volumes, incidentally, are in OEM are better than Q1 volumes with a better mix of higher rim size tires. This volume recovery will continue through Q3 and Q4. And uh, by next year, we will uh, be at a significant growth over lower base, obviously, because this year the transformation is happening. And that will be very good for growth uh, in the placement market as well. Got it. Uh, just a last question. Uh, can you help us with uh, segment-wise capacity utilization, two-wheeler, four-wheeler, truck and bus? So overall, it's uh, improved to nearly about 80%. Uh, the outliers here are uh, truck bus radial, where utilization is uh, in excess of 90%. And uh, in, uh, in uh, farm radial, we have just completed one round of expansion. So uh, optically, the capacity utilization is low, but uh, there's a big demand uh, uh, in US and Latin America, et cetera. So here, the capacity utilization would show as uh, around 65% uh, but this is slated to go up in second half and into next year. Otherwise, it's around 80. So two-wheeler, four-wheeler would be around 80? Uh, roughly around 80. I'm giving you an average figure across categories. Got it, sir. Uh, very helpful, sir. I'll get back to the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, uh, congratulations on uh, the uh, grand prize uh, uh, as the first company on the tire side. Uh, quickly on uh, the capacity uh, question. So, uh, the expansion which we are doing this year, the 800 crore KPEX, that is predominantly towards uh, the OTR tire, right? Uh, or are we also investing now for uh, TVR? Yeah, Kumar, would you like to share the breakup? Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, uh, approximately this, the revised number of 800 that was communicated includes about 200 crores of our normal routine uh, capex, which is R&D, IT, uh, digital molds, and uh, and plant 
related uh, maintenance uh, related capex so we are talking about balance uh, 600 and uh, here uh, we our truck and bus radial we expect to spend little over 100 crores okay and uh, uh, we expect uh, uh, our uh, otr to be in the range of about 250 crores and uh, we also are spending something on downstream of you know our nagpur two wheeler passenger car radial two wheeler and we uh, in addition to that uh, we also have some bla- small portion of the deep bottlenecking that we we had undertaken in uh, halol factory so these things add up to uh, around 800 crores okay okay and what kind of capacity addition do we uh, expect from uh, this 800 crore investment no the major upstream capacity expansion is happening at ambarnath uh, which is speciality there we are going up from 105 tons per day to 160 tons per day uh, that plant will be ready uh, in, in the next year and the balance all the all of them except some debottlenecking a hollow all mostly downstream uh, capacities upstream remain uh, constant okay okay and our strategy of this bite size capex uh, how long can we sustain that before we get on to a proper ground field or a green field uh, capex uh, i mean what i'm trying to understand is Uh, how long can we sustain uh, these kind of 800 to 1000 crore of capex before we have to uh, invest uh, materially uh, in large capacities uh, broadly uh, if you look at our bias size capacity uh, truck and bus bias we don't expect any uh, requirement in the future sure. uh, passenger car and truck and bus radial tires both of them we have enough space in our chennai factory uh, and therefore we don't expect any uh, any green field uh, opportunity uh, in terms of going outside that particular location as and when we add we will add it in the existing location so uh, bro- truck and bus radial is more a down uh, brown field and uh, in case of two wheeler uh, it's more about downstream so under two years i don't think we would need any uh, green field uh, outside the existing location so we don't expect any new green field Uh, investment required based on our long term demand and supply plan uh, for fi 25 and fi 26 and uh, uh, brownfield uh, upstream capacity addition you are aware of ambarnath is one uh, and mm-hmm. second is second bus radial is another one other than that we are not adding any other du- we don't expect add any upstream capacity in the brownfield for the next two years got it and this tdr uh, hundred crores is for uh, upstream or that's for downstream yeah, yeah. a new pro- project we are adding about 45000 tires of capacity per day okay so it's a upstream and downstream uh, it's a brownfield in an existing uh, pcr location at chennai okay got it got it uh, and uh, in that context uh, if i look at our uh, uh, debt uh, evolution so from where we are today at close to 1900 crore uh, we should be easily able to reduce this Uh, well below thousand crore by in the next financial year. Uh, uh, based on our current plans, uh, would that be a fair expectation? No, I know. Uh, I see. We we have reduced the debt uh, to the extent about four fifty crores in the last three quarters. True. Okay. And but we, we don't have plan to bring it down to thousand crores. We are currently at a healthy level. Okay. And uh, uh, our debt debt uh, is currently hovering around one point one one point two. So this is a very healthy level. and uh, we would like to utilize the cash uh, that we generate uh, beyond capex plan that we have uh, to reduce the debt so which would be like uh, 100 100 crores is what we have done in the uh, last two quarters and uh, the performance sustains and if we maintain the capex level that is the kind of a uh, uh, de- direction in which we would like to move uh, debt to but we don't we don't have any plans to bring it down to 1000 crores we would like to utilize the ca- cash to productively invest fair enough and uh, lastly given the expectation of uh, increase in commodity basket by 3 to 4 percentage points uh, do you see market uh, 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 being conducive enough to absorb that kind of price increases uh, of say over two quarters or so and in turn maintain our uh, margins above 14% is that uh, a likelihood uh, which we are looking at or uh, uh, given that you talked about competitive intensity being higher uh there is there could be some risk to margins going forward so kumar i'll answer that 
Yes, yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. No. So, um, uh, what we are realizing is, as the uh, as the situation is evolving more towards the passenger side, where we about two third of our sale is non-truck, where the pricing is increasingly getting um, uh, detached from the underlying raw material movement. Not completely, but it is much more than let's say five years back. So there is some pricing freedom there, if I may call so and uh, say so. And it is not so much uh, uh, available on the commercial vehicle side. So we'll wait and see how the raw material behaves. And uh, uh, two third of our portfolio, we have uh, demonstrated that we can take some calls. So we will we will see if it if the market can absorb at least for our brand. We will evaluate it should the RMC play up in quarter three. Got it, got it. Oh, great, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddhartha Bera from Namura. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats again on the prize and a good set of numbers. Uh, sir, my first question is uh, on this uh, export plan which you plan to sort of push from the last quarter of this year. Uh, will it be fair to assume we might see a pickup or a improvement on the exports as early as Q4 of this year, uh, so that it is visible for the entire next year? Or do you think uh, some of the entry into US, the benefits from that in terms of the revenues might take longer to sort of be visible? So some more thoughts on that. Yeah, so uh, the entry into US uh, should happen by end of quarter four or early quarter one next year. So the impact of ramp up in US will be available throughout FY25, that's one. Secondly, um, uh, the, there is uh, there was a lot of inventory with uh, the trade and in the uh, smaller and bigger OEMs as well in Europe for agri radial stocks, which should come down. And uh, though at lower levels, but normal procurement will start, uh, I think by end of quarter three or quarter four. So Europe should also be better uh, even if the market situation doesn't uh, change uh, throughout FY25 uh, or FY24. Uh, and uh, as I said, Latin America, uh, we are taking some steps to broad base our network there. So that market should as well improve. And uh, some markets in the near vicinity have already normalized to a great extent. So we can uh, expect to see a step up in exports next year. Got it, sir. And one question on the cost side. Uh, so if you see the other costs, line items are also steadily inched up even in this quarter, uh, despite any sort of uh, major events. And I think in the current quarter, we have a few uh, events also. Uh, so uh, first, uh, some thoughts on why it has inched up and can we see a bigger uh, jump in the current quarter given that the events are there? Yeah, Kumar. Yeah, see, uh, largely, if we look at other expenses, um, mostly it consists, uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, one is our marketing-related expenses, second is the supply chain-related expenses, third is outsourcing-related costs, and the uh, uh, fourth broadhead is our uh, all our operating expenses, like travel. Uh, if you look at this, and there was some drop in marketing costs in quarter two versus quarter one, okay, as... Uh, we expended more money in quarter one on uh, on IPL and uh, related marketing costs. Where it went up in quarter two versus quarter one, we're broadly in three different areas. Uh, our quantum of outsourcing volume uh, in quarter two was higher than quarter one, uh, particularly in uh, two-wheeler tires. And uh, number two uh, is uh, we moved the uh, tires from a factory location to the distribution location, we had incurred a SVC cost. It wouldn't have a profit and loss impact, but it, on a line night, some ways it will show other expenses, but it, it is uh, normally part of the closing inventory. Third, our travel costs were a little higher. Our conferences happened in quarter two. People started traveling more. So we had incurred a little higher level of uh, travel costs. Uh, coming to your question, uh, whether you'll see a higher level of other expenses in quarter three and quarter four, I think other expenses will go up in the event, the activity uh, increase. If, if there is a quantum jump in volume uh, in quarter three versus quarter two or quarter four, uh, however, otherwise it should not go up from this level of base uh, into quarter three and quarter four. Got it, sir. 
So lastly, on the walking carpet also, in the, as we started the year, we had told about that it might go up uh, in the year and uh, we don't expect any sort of uh, uh, decline there. But I think in the first half, we have managed quite well. So do you think in the second half, given the demand, how it is, you the walking carpet levels can still go up or uh, we believe uh, it may continue to remain where they are? We, we continue to uh, exercise tight control uh, in uh, in the quarter one, quarter two. Normally, quarter four is when our working capital would be at its best uh, because of higher level of sales in quarter four. Okay, and uh, our debt has come down. We end up normally with a little lower level of inventory. We can we maintain that discipline coming into quarter one and quarter two, uh, both on our raw materials and finished goods. So that really helps. Is lower than what we had originally envisaged, uh, keeping in mind the service levels. Uh, our endeavor is to maintain at the, at this level, okay. And uh, in the event that we want to uh, improve our service level, uh, uh, or if we see some uh, delay in in the uh, transit of materials, particularly in the case of international uh, business, we may have little higher level of inventory. Otherwise, our endeavor is to keep it closer to our current levels. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll come back in a second. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we take the next question, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Chirag Shah from White Pine. Please go ahead. Uh, Chirag Shah, you may go ahead with the question. Yeah, audible. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So first question is, uh, actually, I was disconnected in between, so apologies for repetition. So volume growth uh, for the quarter. Yeah, volume growth, uh, uh, YOY is about 7%. And so this is in standalone or uh, this is including the Sri Lanka at consolidated level? Yeah, it is standalone. Standalone, okay. And the so second question is uh, just just a clarification uh, on this uh, OTR side. So you explained what's happening in the US, how you are looking at it, okay? But if you if you look at 25 and maybe 26, uh, how should one look at the job of a mix for uh, the OTR between on the export side? Can you please repeat your question? So on the OTR, if we, if we take 26 as a year, uh, how one should look at the geography mix between, say, Europe and uh, US? How do you envisage that playing out for you? 25 being the year of feeding the US market. That's why. I'm, uh, so how, how should one look at the mix between US and Europe for your OTR business? Yeah, so OTR and agri-radial business, so we are already in the US market. When I said we'll yeah. launch in the US, it is passenger radial and truck bus radial. Okay. In US, uh, uh, the, we have already started growing, creating the network. We have a team of uh, local local team there in the US already. We have started getting to the OEMs. But in Europe, we are ahead of US. So uh, now we have to see uh, how these two geographies behave. Uh, uh, but we are quite bullish on uh, US market as well. Okay. But uh, is it possible, so internally, are you looking at the kind of a uh, equal split between the two geographies or uh, one geography could have a higher share for the next two, three years? Both are uh, very big markets in their own ways. The product ranges are different. Uh, we are catching up on the product range on the U.S. side because we entered that market later. Uh, but uh, I think both will be equally big. I mean, not exactly equal, but both will be of equal dimensions going forward. Okay. Great. Thank you. And all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Disha Shed from Anvil Shares and Stock. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, good afternoon, sir. Sir, you mentioned that uh, OEM demand has been uh, varied in Q3. So can you, uh, if you can uh, just throw a light on segment wise, as you said, the place and the stable over Q2 in terms of outlook. <coughs> <coughs> Hello? Yeah, yes. Uh, so I mentioned about uh, OEM demand in Q2 actually. Yes, it was varied. 
so uh, just to give you some uh, 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 description category wise two wheeler uh, i think the oem demand was uh, flat to slight degrowth the oem uh, volumes grew only in the month of september and still they are far far below the fy19 peak pre covid so that's two wheeler four wheeler is doing well growing well they have topped an all time high of 2 million tires in half one and this industry is slated to cross 4 million cars 4 million cars in in the entire year so that's doing very well the truck segment uh, uh, dipped uh, very um, um, unexpectedly in the month of june but it has recovered in quarter 2 and it is growing at single di- single uh, uh, digit so that's the kind of uh, lay of the land in oem in q2 हेलो हेलो या सो सॉरी सो द आउटलुक रिमेन्स ऑन द सिमिलर लाइन्स फॉर क्यू थ्री एंड द इयर इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर ऑर्डर बुक Q3 is usually people are OEMs are very optimistic because of the festive demand in October and November. Um, uh, so uh, retail offtakes are reported to be good in the month of uh, September. We also track their retail offtakes. Uh, we have to see how their production comes up because that's what decides our demand. So uh, optimistic in the first two months, but then December is a winter month where uh, where again uh, demand slows down. and it picks up again by feb and march so it's a cyclical seasonal thing um, uh, so q3 may be good if the festival thing works out uh, well and if the monsoon effect is good and so in europe in terms of off road uh, the demand is still uh, bleak or uh, there are signs of improvement no the trade and the oem destocking is has still happened over q2 uh we expect the demand to improve by end of q3 uh, and q4 that's the current expectation okay sir thank you so much sir that's it from my side thank you the next question is from the line of rishi vora from kotak securities please go ahead uh yeah uh, thank you sir for giving the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers uh just one thing on the natural rubber procurement uh, can you just give us a sense on how much of the natural rubber requirement is met uh, through uh, domestic market and how much is uh, uh, imported and also lately we have seen that international prices uh, rubber prices have uh, you know surged uh, quite uh, significantly so what is the reason behind it and do you expect that domestic natural rubber prices because of the higher international rubber prices can inch up like how has been the historical trend of the commodity uh, that would be helpful yeah kumar yeah uh, see uh, see uh, there are two grades of broadly two grades of uh, rubber that go into uh, tires one is called as block rubber and another one is called as uh, sheet rubber uh, indian uh, production is largely sheet rubber almost 95% plus is uh, sheet rubber Okay, and that is what we buy from the local market, and uh, almost all of our sheet rubber we buy locally, and uh, block rubber is what we import from the international markets. Uh, so our overall, if you look at the split between block rubber and sh- uh, sheet rubber, okay, approximately 60% of our rubber would be block, and 40% of that would be uh, sheet. So that that normally the average uh, distribution between block and sheet. you are right uh, the international prices have moved up uh, in the last 2 to 3 months and the, in the previous 3 months actually international prices were lower than the uh, the local market okay so therefore this always there's always in the commodity an arbitrage between the two sources of uh, similar kind of materials uh, yeah, what there are three uh, uh, possibilities one is that uh, natural rubber prices move towards international prices or international prices come down and natural prices move up and they strike a balance okay or there is always a difference of about 2 3 rupees per kg between two sources of rubber so uh, being a consumer of natural rubber you would prefer international prices to come down rather than right. expecting uh, local prices to go up so only time will tell uh, the reasons 
there are no strong fundamental reasons for the international rubber to go up except the fact that uh, it some, sometimes there is a sympathy towards crude oil prices and therefore uh, it has a rub off effect on uh, rubber uh, and, and last is that uh, reason for international prices to be higher than local rubber is also because of the fact that the currency indian rupee which was around 81 to a dollar is now around 83 20 83 50 that itself has had a, about 3% 3 1/2% kind of an impact so it's possible that could be a midpoint between a local and international rubber uh, and that's the way the market could unfold uh, and uh, that midpoint could be local rubber going up uh, if international prices remain the same remain at the same level Mr. Think, sir, what would be uh, the difference between the current lended cost of international rubber and the domestic rubber prices today? Like any sense yeah. you have? See, look, uh, you know it's a commodity. Uh, the, there's no right. one fixed price. But how? I'll give you a broad range. Right. Uh, international could be around one, one fifty-seven, one fifty-eight landed, uh, and local could be one fifty, one fifty-one landed, something like that. Understood. and uh, just lastly uh, on this uh, uh, on the volume growth and the revenue growth so on a yoy basis uh, you know uh, you indicated the volume growth is 7% and uh, revenue growth is a little bit lower so there has been an asp decline and my understanding was that over the last one year we would have taken price increases so what is this uh, what is the reason behind asp decline on a yoy basis is just a mix or is there any other reason uh uh adab you want me to take yeah you can yeah okay i'll take part of it maybe adab will be able to substantiate even more uh, uh as was explained uh, the realization from our one of the uh, three segments which is original equipment manufacturers uh, is linked to the movement in uh, the raw material prices so okay. in a scenario where if raw material prices come down the realization also comes down with a lag of 3 months and the reverse is also true so that's one of the main contributors for a uh, little bit of uh, higher level of volume growth on the total value growth and uh, maybe a marginal decline in the price growth at the company level on the and yeah because of that oem mix uh, impact on the total uh, real estate on the and the sir thank you and all the best thank you The next question is from the line of Akshay Karwa from Anand Rathi. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Just one question on the margin side, sir. Now that we have stopped manufacturing those small print tires and we will be focusing on the larger tires, how do we see the margins going forward in the next two years? Let's say by F26. I mean, in this I mean, this quarter we did a 14% adjusted EBITDA margin. So, where do you see that trend shaping up, sir? Yeah, so um, uh, when I said we are exiting small rim size to higher rim size, it is for passenger segment and in OEMs. So in the OEM segment, as it is the margin is low across rim sizes, the impact will come from higher replacement demand of higher rim sizes, where the margins are definitely high, and the impact of uh, passenger, the saliency of passenger car tire in our overall business. is uh, let's say around 20% or so so mm-hmm. uh, the impact will take time to come it will come gradually but it will be uh, positive as things now same now the higher wind size margins are significantly superior to the smaller wind size margins so i um, mean can we um, like so in order to model so can we assume like something like 17% margins like going forward like in the next after like 2 3 years or something like that or Yeah, yeah. It will. It will take at least two years to translate into distinct, significant improvements. Got it, sir. That's all for my side, sir. Wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal from Swan Investment. Please show her. Please show her. Uh, thank you for taking my question, sir. I had two questions. Uh, first, regarding uh, you know, sir, in terms of RM prices. Uh, what possible action you would be taking to reduce the impact of RM increase, which is happening right now through you know product mix or geography mix or channel mix? Yeah. So uh, as the RM price creeps up, uh, we are already seeing uh, uh, over over the last two years we are focusing on the non-truck side, which is two-three wheeler. 
uh, four wheelers and of highway tyre. So the saliency of this is going up and it will continue to go up quarter on quarter as we speak. So that is one. Plus there are some, uh, you know, micromanagement of uh, product market mix, which we'll also be focusing on. The last resort and uh, definitely a good a good option also, if there's a significant rise in RMC, we'll look at pricing because as I mentioned a while earlier, on the passenger side, there's a little bit more pricing freedom than the commercial side. So we'll look at that as well to mitigate uh, the RMC hike, which looks like inevitable that's going to happen. Okay, okay. So my next question is regarding what kind of peak revenue you can uh, get from the current capacity which you have. Yeah, Kumar, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, yeah. No, see, uh, we had shared uh, this in the, uh, in the earlier call. Um, based on based on 31st March uh, situation, based on the assets that we had commissioned, uh, without taking into consideration the Strachan bus radial addition and uh, uh, OTR uh, Ambarnath addition, I think our revenue potential is little in excess of 14,000 crores. Okay, so that was a kind of a headroom without taking into consideration what we are adding this year and next year. So that is the level up to which we can go. Okay, sir, post that in FY25 and 26, the, the kind of capacity expansion you are taking, you, you shared the important like in plans. So what kind of peak revenue you can generate from once those capacities come in line? Uh, no, uh, okay. Uh, see, uh, we are adding about uh, this year, last year we added about 900 crores of KFS. Okay, only to the extent of assets commissioned, uh, we have taken into consideration. We said the commissioned assets uh, would give us a revenue potential of 14,000 crores. Uh, approximately, uh, without going into specific details, uh, depending on how we commission assets, uh, whatever we are going to add uh, this year, what we added last year but not commissioned, and what we are going to add next year, uh, uh, another 2,000 crores kind of a plus kind of a revenue opportunity is there by FY26. Plus 2,000 crores plus kind of an opportunity. So we use the, all the assets to a 90% uh, plus kind of a capacity utilization. Great, sir. Great, great. So one small question regarding the OTR ramp up. You said that 160 tons will be completed by FY24 end. Uh, it will right? yeah, be in quarter one or quarter two of next financial year. Uh, it is likely okay. to be there at that time. Okay. So, who is that in FY25 and 26? What kind of expansion you are planning for this segment? Uh, Arnab, would yeah. you like to respond? So, right now we are at 105 tons, which is completed, which uh, we intend to ramp up and fill by quarter one of next financial year. In the meantime, 105 itself is getting expanded to 160. So uh, we are evaluating at what point of time we will run it up to 85, 90% capacity and then take up the next expansion. So we are waiting and evaluating at this point of time. 160 is visible. Okay, okay. Sir, so, uh, how much the gross margin improvement uh, happened in Q2 was because of this mix improvement in uh, maybe in product geography or channel? Yeah, so uh, the overall improvement is 2.2% roughly. About half of that would have come from uh, product market uh, fit improvement. Okay. So my last question regarding what kind of internally you are targeting ROE, uh, ROC ex, uh, improvement uh, by next two years at by 25 and 26. Yeah, Kumar. I think, uh, uh, I think we have broadly explained our uh, uh, logic. Okay, and um, our endeavor is to uh, be somewhere bit, uh, in the range of you know 14 to 16 percent kind of ROC eventually when. When we cut down our investments, when we commissioned all of the assets, when the you know uh, commodity environment is stable, that's the kind of a uh, range at which we would like to evaluate uh, reach. Uh, most of our new investments that we have made in the last three years or so, 
and we had a visibility to that for example we always looked at capital investments uh, or a capex which gave us a payback of you know 5 6 years uh, and and according that translated to this kind of a roc so that is the direction in which we are moving i think we are not looking at destination as of now we are looking at uh, many milestones uh, at which we would like to cross uh, in this journey and then keep uh, moving uh, towards that particular direction Fantastic, sir. Thank you. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. So, thank you very much, and uh, wish you all the best for the festivities coming up in quarter three, and see you next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Dam Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.